owner and president of House of Knives. I'm so excited and pleased to have Alex Chen here, executive chef of Boulevard Kitchen Oyster Bar. Uh, it's just a, a total honor to have an iron chef in the kitchen here. I'm almost a little bit intimidated here. <laughs> Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Yeah. For those of you who are joining tonight, we're going to show you how to make the ultimate clam chowder. I mean, if you love clam chowder or anything seafood related, who better learn from than iron chef Alex Chen? Alex, uh, absolute pleasure to have you here. And it's, it's quite a history we actually have unknowingly. Uh, you know, Alex and I have communicated over the last several months during pandemic, and I found out that Alex has been actually a huge longtime customer of ours. Well, Andre, okay, thank you for having me. You know, it's uh, what a beautiful kitchen you have. Uh, Andre, I want you to see, can you see it? On the oh, side? yes, very, very faintly. Yeah. 97. Wow. Okay. I, bought, I, I bought it uh, uh, 98, I went to, I attended cooking school in 1998. Wow. So 97, I was getting ready to say, hey, well, I'm, I'm getting serious. I want to be a, I want to be a chef. And then got some money from my dad. And then I, I, I remember working in, in, in the restaurant. I spent all my money, every, every paycheck that I have. Every, I made a point to buy a new book. Yeah. And bought a knife. And I, I used to hang out. I used to hang out at the house of the one in Lansdowne, which is where I lived in Richmond. And then because I, I used to work around downtown, so I used to go to the Pacific uh, Central. Yeah, that was our smallest location. Yeah, yeah. That location was so small. The first time I went to visit, I walked by and my brother said, you just walked by. And I said, what? There's a store. <laughs> you probably remember. It was literally about 10 feet wide. I think that's it was more like a kiosk. Yeah, right? exactly. So I, I think I, I bought it from there. Yeah. So 97, countless of turkey that I debone, yeah. uh, lamb racks and things like that. still, you know, it's still, it's still in past. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite nights. Yeah, that's the original Grand Prix series. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, you had quite a career already, you know, it's not like you're old or anything, but you know, <laughs> 2018, you win the, you know, the inaugural Iron uh, Chef Canada, you won Chef of the Year in Vancouver. You know, the only thing missing from your resume is the Stanley Cup, I think. <laughs> well, I actually, <laughs> My owner owns the Dallas Stars and stuff like that. We're actually on, on, oh, on their that's way. that's right, yeah. You, know, they, you they, may get your standard cup ring after all. <laughs> so I get to cook for them yeah. all the time. You know, that's, uh, that's the fun. So the secret why the Dallas is doing so good is not their plane, but the it's food you're feeding. I always say, that, I always tell Tom, it's Tom. It's my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> it's always my cooking, yeah. yeah. So the Canucks, uh, you know, you're in the backyard, you used to be cooking for the Canucks. Well, you know, we know a little bit of the history and stuff like that. We don't, we don't, we'll focus on the cooking today. <laughs> yeah, great, yeah. great. So the funny thing was Alex called me up and he goes, you know, I got all the grapes ready, but I need to use a knife. He goes, you have one for me? I said, do I have a knife? I was for that guy. <laughs> Actually, I, I have a special one. If you're, I gave you that one, Alex, but if you really want to, I can give you a, this oh, one, oh, this oh, one to you. <laughs> this is one in, in your collection you probably don't have. Oh, but like this is like, <laughs> you, it makes the best diced vegetables, right? Wow. Yeah, this, this and, is, this and is you also get a workout as a result. Wow. So that's the world's largest forged carving that we did we, oh, 30 years ago. It's quite the piece. Like, I know you got a lot of knives, but I bet you don't have that. Wow, well, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, but off to the inside, I have a special knife for you here. You know, when I heard about the story we talked, uh, you know, uh, uh, Part of our appreciation and gratitude for being a long time customer of ours. I want to give you something special. So Thank you. That's for you. Thank you. That yeah, is, uh, yep. Oh, wow. This is same knife, right? Same knife, but a little bit different. So, of course, it's got your name oh, etched wow. onto it. Cool. But that is, a lim if you look on the back of the blade, that's our new limited edition oh. uh, Vancouver Aquarium okay. Ocean Wise right. knife. Uh, we did this specially for them. We collaborated with them in the spring. It has a slight blue tinge to the handle versus the regular quarry right. is uh, the black and white that's got a um, black and blue. Yeah. And only 100 of those were made and you got the number one of 100. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank so, you. so you can use that tonight. Go, okay. go right ahead. Right. I'll steal mine back. Yeah. <laughs> Another great thing is, so, so Corey is uh, the brand that uh, my wife and I uh, created. We okay. designed that from scratch, our first wow. ever knife line. It took us two years to develop, and uh, you'll find it, it's an ultimate fusion between the sexiness and sharpness of a Japanese right. knife and the durability of the European knife. Wow. So, Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. I, I hope you don't cut yourself uh, here on the camera. That would be <laughs> well, it won't be the first time. No. <laughs> it won't be the first time. <laughs> okay. So, clam chowder, it's one of your most popular dishes at, uh, down at the restaurant, of course. Well, I, I think that everyone grew up in, in Vancouver, you know, coastal town, and, and you have access to all this amazing abundance of seafood, right? Um, there's also been a lot of bad chowder out there. 
Right. I think that the secret for a good uh, chowder society, I think that less is more in terms of like, what, what do you want to highlight? For me, why is that I would like to use complementary uh, flavor profile, you know, like the dills or whiskey, uh, uh, the clams, because we have good clams in, 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 yeah. in Vancouver, a little bit of white wine, a little, small amount of cream, and then just small amount of flour, mm -hmm. so it's not so thick, where it takes everything away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You shouldn't be able to have a wooden spoon stick right in the middle and it sticks out. <laughs> That's a thick, I, I've seen it before. Yeah. I've seen it before, right? So we wish, we, we, we try to always try to create a, a velvety, uh, a really, really just kind of light, uh, uh, super climby, oceanic, umami um, balance. Okay. Chocolate. Sounds good. I'm getting sorry. hungry, you talking about yeah, let's get going. Are you mind helping me yeah. with the uh, uh, potatoes? Yeah, the medium yeah. size? Sure. So I have some, uh, so I have some clams over here from uh, Fanny Bay. Um, I run it under cold water for a little bit, uh, just to try to get the uh, clams to perch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just. Alex, when the average user is looking to buy clams, what are some of the tips you, you suggest to people? Well, I think that the the clams, the most important one, the clams should be alive. Yeah. Like the, um, you can tell sometimes they are semi-open, but when you touch them, they should go to, go back to it. Mm -hmm. you go back and then it's shut. Um, the, the tighter it is, the better. Yeah. Um, and then I usually buy it from uh, uh, really respectable uh, uh, vendors like Fanny Bay or uh, Lobster Man. You know, I just yeah. create that kind of kind of, kind of uh, space. Yeah. How's the cut? Really, really good. So I just want to cut the, the onions because I'm just going to lightly uh, steam the, the clams. Yeah. So I want I want the onions to be uh, fairly uh, thin because we're not going to cook it for too much. So um, for just going to crack it up a little bit. So this onion I'm going to dice for you, right? Yeah, dice, okay. please. So then we got dice. Thank you. Is that right size there, Chef? I don't want to be trouble with it. You're faster than I thought. No? <laughs> so I lightly sweat the, the onions. I have a clove of garlic that I just lightly smash. Yeah. Just put it in there. And then I want to steam it with white wine. Fix the audio issue there. Supposedly on Facebook, people can't uh, read lips very well. <laughs> Continue cutting the leeks. Cut it half. I usually like just want to make sure that the flat surface is just so that so that uh, I'm not going to cut myself. Yeah. That's not very common. I would say people put leeks in a, a chowder. Have you always put leeks and onions in? I I I like I like the French ex aspect of like. You know, building flavors, the mirepoix, and I'll always have some kind of, uh, I opt out the, the uh, mirepoix sometimes consists of uh, of carrot as well, but like, yeah. I want it to be uh, more seafood, so I want to just 
I just want to focus the color to be a little bit more yeah. uh, white. Yeah. Uh, so we also, have texture, I love the texture of the kit games too, right? I think. The flavor too, the onions, understand. all of that, you know, just like, uh, I, 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 like, I like building the flavors, the sweetness. And when uh, we turn acid, we're slowly cooking it, yeah. and then uh, it will eventually become sweet and add more flavor. Yeah. It complements the clam as well, right? Yeah. I don't want to overcook the clam, I just want it to simply just lightly steam. Mm -hmm. And once if it's open, I'm just, it's important right now that we're, we're cooking out the, the wine to get rid of the alcohol. Yeah. Uh, and then the, I'm also extracting the natural nectar. Mm -hmm. Of the of the clam. So, what does a what does a clam chowder should what should it taste like? It should taste like clam. How do we get that? Uh, we we have some canned clams over there, but we also uh, make sure that we have getting our own uh, clam juice by yeah. steaming them. I'm saving all the good stuff yeah. uh, because the, the the clams has been purged in uh, in water. Yeah. So um, it should be uh, it should be. It should be nice and clean. It should be a super tasty. It's good amount of salt in there because the clam has a lot of salt as well. Yeah. And then I have, uh, I have a strainer right here. I'm just gonna strain it up. And I'm just gonna save the clams for later. Because we're just gonna use it for garnish. I'm just gonna yeah. keep it in the back. Yeah. Right there. Now, um, Chef, yeah. fast to fiction, most people say if the clam doesn't open up after you steamed it, don't eat it. Don't eat it, yeah. because that's usually when it's, uh, it's already dead. Yeah. Right? So I think that, that those are important um, aspects when you're looking for, you know, the clams, you should, you should not smell yeah. anything beside the ocean. Right? Yeah. Anything that's just funky and that, you know, that you have a, you have a off. Yeah. yeah, it's not worth the risk though. No, not, not at all. Not at all. So, Celery. Celery is also another sort of like a vegetable that I love to put in the uh, seafood. I think it complements it. A little texture as well. Uh, good flavor profile. You, know? yeah. you never have enough fiber, right? Yeah. So I'm growing up on a farm, there's certain vegetables that I just hated and celery is one of those to me. It's, it's right up there with lettuce because it tastes like nothing. <laughs> but but as I got older, I understand the importance of it. So I sometimes force myself to eat uh, more greens than I'd like to. Well, let you, you let me know when, when I can do uh, a braise, uh, a celery, uh, a little chicken stock, a little tarragon, a little shave uh, uh, black truffles from a paragon. Oh. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that were I, I, I really, really enjoy uh, celery that way. A little celery etouvee, um, super classic, but then, you know, like, just like anything, when you are, when you are ruined by like eating sort of like beets when you're younger, that way you didn't have yeah. properly uh, cook beets. Yeah. So the beets itself, it's like, you know, my interaction with beets was like back in the day where there used to be restaurants like Sizzler. No, <laughs> the, the, the uh, buffet, the salad. Yeah, yeah. Right? All you, all you can, I, I used to call those not all you can eat. Well, yes, can handle, yes, right? yes. So like uh, you know, you eat the beets. It's like, oh, why is it so acidic? Why yeah, is it yeah. so badly had? It yeah. came out of a can, yeah, right? Yeah. So and, and until you, you know, you work for a proper chef, they they wrap the whole thing in salt. They will slowly roast them, or they just grab the smaller little beets and then they. They slowly confit them in duck fat, little yeah. shallots, little thyme, yeah. and then you slowly peel it away, and you taste it's like, wow, it came from the best farm, yeah. and then it, it, it's under the uh, hand of a, uh, a, a great chef. And then just be like, I just added a little duck fat, yeah. a little technique, yeah. and a little bit of salt. And all of a sudden you'd be like, now that's what a beet should taste like. Yeah. So I think that that's why, I think that, uh, Going forward, I, I still think that the uh, um, chef will still have a job. Yeah, yeah, true. It's all about the technique and yes. the knowledge, right? Yes. Because I can't really replicate. So actually, it should be my mother I blame for not liking beets. Because <laughs> <laughs> we grew those on the farm too, and I hated those. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that the, uh, you know, having the right amount of restraint as well is also important, right? Yeah. So, um, so right now, so far, we have the Yukon Go Potato. I like. I like the color of it. I, I like the texture, how it reacts in this uh, in this dish. You have yeah. the onions, you have the celery, you have the leeks. Now the final stage. I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna cut the uh, fennel. Mm -hmm. Just remove the core. 
Now that's not very common in a chowder spinner. Yeah, you know, and, and again, it's 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 it's, it's uh, perhaps why our chowder is just so um, it's not complicated. Yeah. But it's just simply we're just using all the flavor that complement each other, yeah. right? The quality of the ingredients. Yes. Is what so makes it. You know, I, I, I'm really enjoying this knife, uh, by the way. It uh, feels good, it has a good weight to it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think that the old European one sometimes could be a little bit uh, cutting thick. Yeah. That's at least what I what I remember from the from the past. This is a combination of like a, a really sturdy handle. Yeah. And then the blade itself is just like, a, like, a, like you said, it's a, it's a hybrid. So it's a little bit of a... You have a thinness of a of a, of a Japanese one, so it cuts yeah. really really well so far. Yeah. You know? and it's got a bit of heft too. Yeah, and we also made a point on a big one and having enough knuckle clearance, so you notice the wide blade. Yeah, it, it ends up giving you about twenty five percent more knuckle clearance. So guys with big hands don't even have to worry about their knuckles wrapping on the heavy one. Yeah, yeah. So far so good, you know. So right now we're almost ready to go. So. So obviously at uh, Boulevard, you specialize in seafood, uh, oysters, your, your go-to dishes, would you say? Well, oysters, you know, uh, uh, fortunately, um, you know, we, we, we simply just source the best uh, um, oysters uh, in, that is in season. Mm -hmm. Just help you with the shepherd, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The mother of the has already done his job, you know? Um, we do, obviously we do a hot oysters as well. We poach them or we can do cooked oysters. But our majority of our oysters is usually just simply it's on a, on, a, on a bed of crushed ice, nice, nice, nice and cold, yeah. and it's all really on it. Just a little bit of a mignonette, yeah. and then the, a small amount of cocktail sauce for me, yeah. and then that just to the back. It's yeah. Just like I don't yeah. know. I, 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 less is more. Right? Yeah, less is more. As I get older, it's something that I've become more of a uh, purist. You know, like I yeah. think that the I enjoy. Um, uh, simple uh, flavors. Yeah, I find that very true, especially when it comes to beef. For example, some people marinate the heck out of it. So yeah. Why, especially when you have a great cut of beef, yeah. right? You want that natural flavor to come through. Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, that's very, very true in so many ways. Uh, because when you use well, prime, right? You want, you want, you want to taste the marble, and you're paying so much money for it, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm heating up the pot. You know, using just like anything. Um, it's all the small little things. Like what is what is what 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 is yielding a good result right now? It's just like it's good quality knife, good quality. Always when people say I love food, I said it's a knife. Yes. There's nothing yes. with, with, yeah. with my cookie or my wife's cookie. You almost, it's a knife. You almost have a tattoo tattoo that cool, right? You know, it's always the, the, the quality of our pots and pans. It's always yeah. the it's such from ingredients. Yeah, it's, it goes with your cooking. Uh, um, uh, you know, you know, pots and pans that is that is heavy bottom. Yeah. That is just like durable, even heating, so that you don't get like spot. That is just like uh, you're going to be scorching the, the bottom of the pan. Exactly. Right? So I don't want it to be too hot because I'm going to be adding uh, uh, some butter to it. Yeah. Like anything else, it's about uh, you know. I always tell people it's like an artist, right? If they don't have the right paint brush or a carpenter using the wrong saw, you're not going to enjoy the experience. Yeah. Right? Unless you're in a Chinese restaurant, you only use one knife for it. Yeah. You know? They'll tell you that, right? Yeah. So small amount of uh, oil, and I think it move fairly fast with this. Now that's so, just canola oil you use there? Just a little bit of canola oil. Yeah. And then uh, I'm gonna add some butter in there already. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna start building flavor from this point on. Yeah. Now you add a bit of oil with the butter just so it increases the temperature. So it yeah, I, 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 I found that the, uh, the pan was a, uh, Heating up a little bit uh, a hot. Yeah. I didn't want to just put uh, a butter in there, or else it's just gonna brown. Yeah. Super yeah. fast, right? Yeah. So essentially, right now we want to build flavors, and then we we, we have butter, yeah. and then, then we have uh, flour. So building a roux. Yeah. Uh, at the end. So I'm gonna strut my my onions. Alps, the butter you put in there, just regular salted butter, right? No, I actually don't use, um, in our kitchen, we don't use anything salted butter. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we use strictly 
non software this is the stock itself for me. It's yeah. uh, I like to be in control yeah. in in the in the saltiness of uh, how I season things and stuff yeah. like that. Like so, uh, in general speaking, all the kitchen that I've been working in the last twenty years has always been uh, mm -hmm. non salted But obviously, for the customer, we will use salted uh, yeah. butter uh, for certain certain areas of the of the kitchen. Yeah. Right. But uh, cooking wise, as I usually just even the pastry, they don't they don't even use. Uh, uh, you prefer, you prefer unsalted. Unsalted. No, for in, in many aspects, yeah. You know, back in the day when I trained, the big thing was using clarified butter. How much is that in use? In Still, day? you know, like uh, when we used to do breakfast, uh, when we, um, you know, I eventually will come back, right? Holiday sauces every day. Right? Yeah. We make holiday sauce every single day, twice a day, right? Um, yeah, clarified butter is just. You know, after all the milk solid has been removed, you know, the, 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 the smoking point is a little bit higher than this is regular. So that, you know, it's, it's, flavors is great. We actually like to bring it to another level too, like uh, Bernard was at, right? So that it's like brown butter. Mm -hmm. So like, just continue to yeah. roast it. And then we incorporate that, a lot of that brown butter into our, a lot of our dessert as well. I love that yeah. salted caramel, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, there's a certain flavor you can't get yeah. otherwise, right? Yeah, so celery, celery, onions, leeks just went in. Okay. Now, do you ever put carrots in your chowder? Well, it depends. You know, like uh, if if I'm if I'm cooking for a, uh, a tomato based one, yeah, then I, I can I certainly can. Yeah. Nobody ever seems to say you just ruined the chowder if I put a carrot in there. Yeah. But I chose. I want everything to be kind of like you know. That's just a color of choice. I want it to be like a, a white chowder, a creamy chowder. Yeah. So I chose not to put it. You know, people put in red peppers and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, my, this is my chowder. Yeah. You guys can do your own film yeah. shit. You know? <laughs> now, Alex, uh, do you guys serve Manhattan chowder as well at the restaurant, or just New England and Boston? Just, just, you know, we, we call it the, we, we, just, just cream, cream, uh, cream based uh, uh, chowder. Okay. And then uh, we add a little bit of uh, smoke, local sable fish. Oh, nice. Smoke sable fish in yeah. there. We, we don't put bacon in there, so it yeah. places that little smokiness and stuff like that. And then it, it, it comes together because it's velvety, the time you cook it and stuff, and then the potato and everything all works really well together, yeah. right? Yeah. So the vegetables have been uh, lightly um, uh, sweat. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some uh, flour in there. But a cup of flour, that is? Yeah, about one cup of flour. So here I've, uh, I also have some uh, uh, fish stock that uh, halibut bones. Mm -hmm. I, I love using halibut bones. Uh, what I usually like to do is just basically the same repeat of, except for potato. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I built the flavor profile by using the same ingredients. Mm -hmm. Celery, onion, carrots, a little bit yeah. mushroom in there, bay leaf. Um, so like this one right here, we, put, we call it a little sachet. Mm. Uh, bouquet gani, like so. Yeah. We have a little thyme, a little bay leaf in there, and then a little cheesecloth, just so that we can remove it because there's all this little uh, uh, dry herbs and stuff, they're all yeah. uh, fresh herbs, they're all woody. Uh, it's not palatable on your palate, so it's just mm. high low, which is fine. Yeah. So we can add it into the. Uh, so for the for the stock, um, you know, like I always, I always been told that you know, I'm pretty good at making uh, soup. I always just say, you know, like really, it literally, you have to be a good, you have to be good at your foundation, such as yeah. making a good soup, uh, making a good stock, yeah. or using great ingredients, yeah. halibut bones. Uh, what I like to do is I cut up a lot halibut bone, I fill it up with cold water, sometimes with ice. Mm -hmm. I bring it to a boil, so I remove the impurity, I get rid of it. I'm going to strain it up. I strain it off, mm -hmm. I start again yeah. with cold water, ice water. Okay. Now this time, the second time, I add all the marrow about the same size yeah. because then, because the fish stock is thirty minutes to, 50, to forty-five minutes, and that's it. Okay. So that means that I want to get the maximum amount of flavor from all the vegetables. Yeah. So I'm extracting that. So it's about forty-five minutes after. Yeah. Then I got myself a clear, uh, non-cloudy uh, uh, fish stock that yeah. you have to constantly strain, and then, then you have to strain through a chinois. Yeah. Right, just a little china cap, yeah. uh, a strainer, cheese cloth, right? Uh, sometimes, depending if I'm making into a consomme, I, we, 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 I, I make them uh, uh, straight through a coffee cooker. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So it works. It removes all the areas. No, I love making stuff. It's almost yeah. a lost art. We we kind of joke around it, but you know we always start it's more healthy so eating. So true. And you know, so much of the younger generation, kids just think soup comes out of a can now. They don't even know what the heck stock is. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. Like it's just, uh, you know, it's it's, it's not like bone broth is a new it's a new thing. So like, come yeah. on, we've been drinking that since day yeah. one, right? <laughs> So interesting, you said for a uh, fish stock, you would go maximum kind of 45 minutes, but people who would make a good chicken or bone stock will you like go four hours, four hours, hours, yeah. sometimes yeah. even eight or four Because, right? because obviously it's a bigger bone and you have more collagen in the meat uh, yeah. in the, in the, in the, in the pack, and it obviously yeah. it's not an uncommon thing to have like the pork saw or the heavier, the, 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 the veal saw or, mm -hmm. or the, uh, uh, all the other stocks that we might even go over like yeah. 12 to 14 hours or something. Yeah. So, um, potato went in, yeah. and then what I have right now, it's, um, I'm going to add a little bit of cream. I'm going to actually add all the cream, all the liquid in there. Uh, generally speaking, when, when you make a roux, a uh, hot roux, cold liquid. Yeah. So that, that then it will be lumpy. But if yeah. you use hot roux and then hot liquid, it becomes really lumpy. So that's just how, how I usually, yeah. uh, something that we always learn in culinary school that it's always been uh, stuck in my head. Yeah, no good tip. Now, if your stock was cool, you could easily add that first. Perfect, then, then that, that would make uh, perfect sense. Hot roux, cold liquid. Yeah. Now the cream you're using, you're using whipped cream? Whipped cream, yeah. Heavy, 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 uh, yeah. it's a good stuff. No, no, no yeah. light, no, we're not going no to die. No, 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 <laughs> none of that. We're all going for maximum uh, uh, flavors here. Yeah. So the um, the clam nectar that obviously, sometimes people might just throw it away. Oh, but, like, this is that's liquid gold. This is a good stuff. So yeah. we're gonna add it in there. This is where it really, really sort of add the whole, tie the whole thing together. We, uh, we are adding uh, um, flavors, you know, into, yeah. So that it's you're never really gonna know about the uh, the thickness of liquid until the liquid comes to a boil, mm -hmm. right? So like, obviously we will need a lot more liquid. We will need some uh, fish stock. So slowly we're gonna ladle that in there, yeah. right? So at this point right now I'm just gonna add this, and then I'm just because I know that my my roux is not lumpy yeah. because I add uh, uh, cold cream. Oh, that is so good. I'm just gonna slowly, I'm gonna do my slowly, just add it in there, maybe yeah. like just like sure. about half while I uh, put some uh, dill. Dill, yeah. sorry, go on. Oh, what's really important when you're doing uh, fish stock is you wouldn't want to use something like salmon, very strong flavor for chowder. You're supposed yeah. to stand with the white fishes, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, I've always, I've always stayed away from like um, oily fish such as the mackerel, uh, the, um, Sable fish, mm -hmm. the salmon. Yeah, you know, I I think that is is like if I'm making a salmon chowder, yeah, by all means, I, I would, right? Um, I do like, I dill is not. I'm not really crazy about about dill. Just like rosemary, I'm not crazy about them. Yeah, but uh, for me, seafood wise, you know, for for this sort of like treatment, I always uh, I always gravitate to it uh, dill. I I love that uh, flavor. Yeah, just the smell of it, right? It's so refreshing. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, 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 I love it in, uh, you know, if I, if I don't have dill in, in, in my chowders, it's like something's missing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the rest of the ingredients, you know, I have, um, so I have dill over here. I have some uh, lemon juice, zest of lemon. Mm. I have a touch of uh, a salt, a little bit of sugar. Yeah. And then the uh, fennel pollen. Fennel pollen is probably one of my favorite uh, spices. So mm. I, I love it. Yeah, so it's just like, it's very much, um, it goes really well with scallop, it goes really well, just like it's that anise flavor, the sweetness mm. and stuff like that. It really, really complements the the seafood. Mm. I think it ties the whole thing together. Yeah. But it's all the small little things, like you said, you know, yeah. like you said, oh, fennel is not common in, in, in uh, uh, fennel is not common in your chowder or, or neither is your celery, but it's all the small little things that we do, right? Yeah. Uh, Liam Perrin sauce in there, just a small touch of a Tabasco. And then uh, have a little sort of can can just so that we can yeah. we can uh, 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 add more flavor to it. That nectar that you put in before else came from the can can that I assume, right? No, the nectar uh, I was steaming the I was steaming the clams. Oh, okay, white wine. Yeah, right. And, and then the uh, 
and then I, I save the clams for, for garnishing okay. uh, later. And then I just want to add all, all the clam juice yeah. in there, right? Yeah. So just sort of we have uh, just infused. Yeah. Just like a uh, morning. Not anything go to waste. Yeah, not at all. So at this point right now, like I can just slowly add all the ingredients in there. Um, except for my dill, because I want it to be nice and bright green at the end. Yeah. Right? Uh, all I need to do now is to worry about uh, potato. Potatoes obviously will take some time to cook, right? Um, but I'm just going to add all my ingredients in there. My salt just went in, my sugar just went in. Yeah, basically with the potato, the starch as it cooks will help thicken up uh, the chowder as well. Yeah, for sure. Just, uh, just uh, ever so slightly. And then the, because I still have a good amount of uh, fish stock with me, yeah. then I can just control the, um, the thickness of, you know, sometimes I find that, you know, as I change the season and the summertime, you know, it could be exactly the same uh, chowder, yeah. but maybe the same time I'm going to eat lighter. So yeah. it's a lighter. Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, so I, I add a little bit more liquid uh, yeah. in there. And then as the, sum, as the summer ends, as the fall, you know, which is around the corner, I can suddenly feel that the air is changing, the leaves are starting to turn yellow. Uh, the autumn, um, I tend to um, want it to be slightly thicker. Just well, it's, come, it's comfort too, yes. right? When yes. it's cold, you feel yeah. better just having it thicker. Yeah, I just think though, because it's, it's also not as, not as uh, hot, I'm sorry, yeah. right? Yeah. So at the restaurant, when you're having your chowder, do you guys make it fresh pretty much daily? Um, you know, we, we make it uh, as, as, depending on the volume. Um, yeah. Obviously right now it's a strange time with COVID. Yeah. Uh, but we used, to be, we used to have to make it uh, at least uh, three times a week. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's, it was a fairly popular item. It was, yeah. a, it was a good lunch item as well, yeah. right? Uh, not too heavy. Um, you know, chowder, and then just like any cooking, it's uh, it's not pastry, so it's not a it's not a thing that where oh I, I must add this in there, I must add the baking powder, I, I, I must add the baking soda. It's just kind of like yeah, it's just as you go. Yeah, it's also not creativity, salty. right? Right, like it's just I just as I go, I taste as I go. You know, I know that the potato right now, this is not not cooked yet, but I know that you know. It's often that I, I, I need to taste. Everything's there. So is it Iron Chef uh, ready? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny that uh, the Iron Chef, uh, uh, um, I went to, I went to VCC, I went to cooking school in 1998, yeah. right? Um, and in '97, I bought I bought the knife from you guys. Yeah, uh, I remember. I remember. I went to. I was in the uh, cooking school back then. It was still uh, VHS. You no, know, the tape. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> this was, like my kids would be like, "Dad, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? What is that? What is that? Right?" Um, I remember a guy just came to me to say, "You should watch this." I was like, "I didn't share it. Like, what is that? I've never heard of it." Oh. So I went home. I remember with my. Uh, with my uh, girlfriend, okay, you know, and we were cuddling and then we were just kind of watching the, the video uh, uh, together. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, what is, what is going on? What is this? This is so, it is so crazy, but it's so legit at the same time. You're like, and then I think that at that moment, that's when I was really, really bitten by the, the, bug. the competition bug. Oh, yeah. Right? That's really, really just sort of. I, I, you, I never felt something that I love so much. It's just wow. like it, it, it runs through my veins. Like as if you have that moment, you're looking at it. It's like, yeah, that's. I want to be there. Yeah, I want to do it. I want to experience that. Yeah. And then as you go through it, and then you know, like uh, they didn't they no longer do the show, and then the the American did the American Iron Chef. Yeah. And then by the time the they they call me uh, for the Canadian version, it's just like, hey, you know, that's that hit the. I hit the spot. That that's that's it. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, just went and and really really took the um, really enjoyed the moment. You know, like um, yeah, yeah, just just enjoyed it. 
So this clam chowder you're making, is it the same clam chowder you guys did with OceanWise uh, during the fundraiser for the accordion? The foundation is very much uh, uh, the same. Yeah. The fundamental of it is uh, definitely the same. Yeah. Um, because we had some uh, assistance in terms of like seafood, there's a lot okay. of great partners. Yeah. Jindara, Sable were, were donating a case of, um, of uh, Sable fish for us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is such an important program for, for, for ocean wise for the aquarium, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, great ingredients already. You know, Sable fish is like local fish yeah. and that's just been uh, fresh. Yeah. That was a phenomenal program, by the way. For those of you watching who aren't familiar with it, basically, it was not only just Boulevard, but so many restaurants so many others, stepped yeah. up to basically sell this great chowder as a yeah. fundraiser for the yeah. aquarium. So we took the sable fish, lightly uh, cured them with salt overnight with, and, and maple syrup. Yeah. And then we smoked it over a uh, uh, cold smoke uh, over uh, uh, apple wood. Wow. And then then after that, we removed all the bones, we diced them up, yeah. and we added them to our chowder. Wow. Basically exactly the same, but then yeah. with, the, with another elevated ingredient, something subtle, you just yeah. smoke, smoked it, and then with maple syrup, it's super balanced. When you taste it in there, it's just like kept it chunkier yeah. than normal. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know. I, I I thought that was uh, that was uh, it, it sold up pretty quick. Oh, so yeah. in order uh, uh, for us, wise, not only we committed to one, but we, we committed the second second round. So we did instead of uh, giving you know X amount of money to them, we give we give double oh, to, wow. to to the credit yeah. because it's like. No, it, it requires time, it requires a lot of effort, not a lot of help in the kitchen, but yeah. it was the right thing to do because I remember my kids, both of my kids were running around like a little, just little kids just going through the uh, uh, aquarium, yeah. you know, just like looking at all the fish. Yeah. And as I go through all the fish, all the, all, the, all the shellfish, I tell them exactly how am I going to cook this, how am I going to cook that, I want to eat this, I want to eat that, you know. I know Ocean Wise could be mad at me, but you know, I did. I did have all the thought, you know, the king crab, I wanted to eat that. I wanted to eat that, that halibut, I wanted to eat that uh, the fish from the Amazon, but obviously I never had a chance to do that. Like, okay. um, no, yeah, it's such a great organization. And that's yeah. why we, uh, you know, we initiated uh, that special knife with them several months ago, and unfortunately they're temporarily on pause, but I'm very confident that they will be back. It was such a uh, fundamental uh, program for yeah. For, for Vancouver, you know, yeah. so 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 who we are, right? So yeah. I think the um, just like checking for the doneness of the potato. Potatoes need yeah. a couple more minutes. Yeah, it's not far away. Yeah. So for me, wise, it's uh, at this stage right now. I tasted it. It's good. The um, the clam is there. Uh, the saltiness, the balance, the the. Um, all the, all the vegetables the are looks awesome. Yeah, it, it's it's at the right uh, consistency now. Yeah. Um, one important factor it's when we we always try to remember to remove the uh, sachet. Yeah. So the little spice pouch that we call it, so that we can remove it. We tie them so that we not all your herbs is uh, floating around. It's yeah. easy to remove. Then it's ready to go. Uh, we do that with a lot of our soups as well, and then uh, you know. With stuff like that, sometimes we forget. I know yeah. that it's one of those, every single chef has done it. The rookie's uh, uh, mistake, you take it to a blender, like your tomato soup <laughs> or asparagus soup, and then when you go blend it, and, all of a sudden, and it just it shoots up, <laughs> because then you have a yeah, so cheese, 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 cheese coming there. there. So everybody has done it, and they will, they'll do it once, yeah. and then they'll always remember that they never right. do that again. Yeah. You know? you know, the bouquet garnet, you also put in the stock as well? I do. Uh, we. It's a, it's a fundamental, it's like everything that we do, it's just, like we just take kind of exactly the, the, the foundation, we built it, and yeah. we built it on the second level. So, mm -hmm. so that's why a good chowder, chowder, just like a good wine, just like a good yeah. uh, food, it should linger. But then the same thing, just keep fortifying the same thing. So yeah. that, you know, the, we will not change. If I put uh, dill in there, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm, I, I will put dill again on, 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 on my final product, right? Mm -hmm. So that I'm not gonna put, uh, cilantro in there and then yeah. skip all the cilantro at the end. So it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. So um, to me at this point right now, I'm just going to add in the dill. Yeah. Okay, do you have a, a bowl? Maybe? Yeah, absolutely. 
Good job on the knife. Thank you. Now the great thing too, and Alex, you could speak to this, one of the things that uh, I really took away when I did my years of training and brief work in the industry was when you learn how to make a, a good soup, the foundation is all the same, whether you want to make a cream of celery, cream of cauliflower or mushroom, right? The very essence of making the roux and starting with your, you know, your onion, celery, in some cases, carrots or, or whatnot is, is all for, 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 like when you, when you learn soups, uh, you, you learn regional soup, such as like whether you learn different type of like a miso soup to yeah. different type of soup, like whether it's broth base yeah. or cream base or consomme, right? So literally it's only sort of like a few types. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, then the foundation is all there. It's kind of, you yeah. have to, it's, it's everything that I do in, in the kitchen is never about like, oh, this is, this is the earth. It's just, this is like, this is Mars. It's, the technique is not crazy, but it's the ingredients we use. At this stage in my career, it's also restraint. Mm. It's about like, let's not add the six ingredients in there. Mm. Let the rest of the ingredients say, yeah. right? Yeah. At what point do we push the ingredient to? Mm. And then sometimes it's about people are always impatient. So they like, right. they add stuff in there, and then they be like, okay, it's done. Well, no, it has to reduce by another half. Yeah. It's about two hours away. Reducing, it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a big thing that I do because it's reducing. You remove a lot of the liquid. The liquid you add, you have so much liquid in there, it dilutes the flavor. But what we're trying to do is remove a lot of the liquid by reducing, yeah. focusing, concentrating the flavor, yeah. and then then we add the season at the end, so that we have we allows it to. To come to a a, 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 a a stage where we think, hey, that's the right amount of intensity. Yeah. I, I know I, I hit my nose, it's like that's right. My palate is like I, I can taste everything, but it needs a little bit of salt. Yeah. Just a little bit of salt, a little bit, it needs more, it needs to balance out. How do we balance out? We add balance out like, like saltiness, a little bit of the sugar in there. Yeah. Uh, spiciness, we put a little bit of lemon in there. Yeah. Or if it's too sweet, we put a little bit of lemon in there. Just, just to yeah. hide everything together. Right? So that's just kind of like how, how we do things. And I just put uh, uh, the rest of the clams, no waste, back in there. I like the consistency to be a little bit thinner. Whole day. This is this could be my oh, this could be my dinner. Yes, just like potato, all yeah, the time. sourdough, loaf. Oh on yeah, the side it's, it's, it's great. Yeah, you know, a side of a, a, a bowl of a cornbread is to die for with this dish. It smells great. It smells and looks great. I'm sure, it tastes great. That's the part that's the best about time. We actually get to enjoy it after a bit. <laughs> yeah, so it's not too thick. It's the nice velvety uh, 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 texture now. You know, just a small amount of like dill, additional dill, just a little torn up. It's good to go. Yeah, amazing. Great presentation. It looks great. It smells great. I'm sure it's going to taste great. Awesome. Style, uh, yeah. Clam chowder, yeah. uh, just missing the uh, smoked sable. Oh, okay. Is that the only difference between this and what yeah. you serve at the restaurant? Yeah, smoked sable. Smoked sable fish. That's yeah. it. The way you describe the smoked sable fish, it sounds so good. I, you wouldn't need any chowder. I love sable fish. Yeah. Just, oh, like uh, like the, the recent, the recent sort of like obsession is like uh, you know re. You know, revisit the, the roots, the, the childhood memory. You know, as a chef, it's important. Those are all the guiding principle of yeah. of who you are. You, know? yeah. you're, you, know, you you find out about yourself. Uh, and you cook because you remember the flavor profile from your mother. You know the, the, the food that she feeds you, your background. You know what kind of food that you like. And as you 
as you go through your school, your training, your you're influenced by great chefs of the, of, of the kitchen, you remember those flavor profiles, yeah. you, you pick those up as you travel the world, as you as you work with different chefs, and then in all of that, and you come to a stage that where or your environment and the seasons also uh, uh, affect how you cook, yeah. how you think, how you approach food, right? So those are just, just for me, like that, by, 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 by that point, just kind of like the, the, the foundation of who you are, yeah. what you like. Uh, Saber fish nowadays, like, uh, um, I, I really enjoy, you know, Hong Kong Barbecue Master is a good, uh, is a good uh, friend of mine. Okay. You know, I, I, I took his uh, marinade, I just said, hey, chef, give me your char siu, you know, the yeah. barbecue pork yeah. sweet one, you'll be your marinade, give it to me, right? I love cooking with open flame, charcoal, yeah. things of that nature. Yeah. And I, I took that, I took that his uh, marinade, I marinated the sable fish. Mm. And I just grilled it over a charcoal, oh. just like char it. It's kind of like, you know, like what, what a, such a, a good char ends, burn ends of like the, the char siu. Right? Yeah, yeah. They mimic that, you know, this is, it's, wow, it's very awesome. fatty, and then the smokiness is oily. It's just like it's super juicy, yeah. and then the anxious, and then because he's a master, you know, his flavor profile just like it works. When you taste it, it's just like okay, yeah. you know, like just playing with uh, with with food, reconnecting yeah. my my childhood memory, and uh, yeah, that's good. And yeah. I think that's the, the fortunate thing, especially as just talking to a friend today, but that who's also shot in terms of how fortunate we are to live in this area of Vancouver and have such diversity in terms of food, right? Yeah. And have those different fusions. Life is not boring for sure. Food no. is not boring in, in, in Vancouver. We, we were blessed with uh, some of the best farmers. Uh, you know, it's just relationship. You know, it's fostering their relationship. They, make, they, they produce, they work hard to produce uh, uh, green vegetables, uh, forages, goes out with mushroom, they know the season, they know the land, they're so connected with the mountain. Yeah. We're blessed with Pacific Northwest, where some of the best uh, uh, matsutake, pine mushrooms, uh, pochini, morels, shonchels, we have it all, right? Lobster mushrooms, right now it's just like it's blooming with uh, mountains, blooming with the uh, uh, shonchels, white shonchels, and then lots of uh, pine mushrooms that's just going on right now. And just so it's just so uh, abundant and then our, our backyard, it's, just, yeah. it's the ocean, yeah. right? And you kind of forget that, I know, you know, from an environmental standpoint, that's what they try to cook within season, right? Yeah. We're kind of spoiled, when you think back when we were kids, yeah. and you couldn't get strawberries all through the year, yeah. now we're spoiled, we can get anything anytime, yeah. but, you know, for affordability and eco-friendliness, you know, try to cook within the season of what's local. For sure, I, I, I think that, you know, like for, for me, like I, I live in Los Angeles for, uh, for six years, you know, like uh, I used to frequent the farmers, farmers market in the uh, uh, in the Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, you can really, really understand the season because when you buy it, because they only will serve you what they grow. Yeah. As as the same vendor, you may be able to see them have three products. You know, in the in the in the, in the fall, you might have with the best Asian pear. It's not the most beautiful. Yeah. It's like ugly, delicious. Yeah. Like it's it's great. Like yeah. some of the fruit they have. You know, when the stone fruit season comes in the summertime, it's like 30 types of stone fruit from pluwa to peaches, red pe like, like white peaches, yellow peaches, somewhere in between, yeah. all the plums, you can taste it, you know, all the, the strawberries and stuff like that, you can taste it, right? So like, uh, you know, we, we live in Richmond, so like Richmond Country Farm is something like where yeah. we love going. It's one of the biggest farm there. And you know, of course they need to supplement uh, a lot of stuff from outside, but yeah. then, Whatever I always look for the sign. He said, "Our own watermelon, our mm -hmm. own this. We grow our own corn. We grow our own beans. We grow our own fava beans. All that stuff. So that's, that's what I buy, yeah. right? In 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 reality, it's just like as when you when you buy local, when you buy uh, when you focus on the seasonality, mm -hmm. and then you are enjoying the terroir of your of your." Bountiful, like from yeah. here to all, all the way to yeah. Okinawa. Yeah, it's a great point. You, you help, you know, the old saying, you know, through pandemic, is, yeah. uh, shop and support local. And yeah. way do that yeah. uh, through the food system, then it's a eat seasonally. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I think that the food should not be um, should not be intimidating. You know, we're feeding, feeding ourselves, that's one. Feeding, you know, through that, through good food, feeding our soul, it's energized us. 
you know, using good foundation, building good flavors, just like using good knives and good pots and pans and just using quality stuff. I, I always, I would say a good pan like that, you and I just talked about that, mm-hmm. and we all thought that's just been around for, you've been using it for 20 years. 20 years ago. It will outlast you. Yeah, and then, oh, yeah. You know, just like the knives. That's the bad part of our business. People yeah. say, how do you stay in business? They buy a knife, they never have to buy another one. You, you shop them too. That's why you maintenance and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. maintenance is key. Yeah, so, so yeah. Like, uh, well, thank you for, for, for having me today. You know, I enjoy oh, my you. pleasure. You know, the, the kitchen is working so well, I might just, I might have to move in. <laughs> hey, I don't think anyone would complain about that. Next, <laughs> but no, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. And uh, definitely we'll, we'll have you back again. Yeah. Appreciate that. We're going to enjoy this. But uh, yeah, thanks for being a long time supporter of ours. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can do this again. Shop local. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. Hey, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, sorry for some technical difficulties we had there on Facebook, but uh, yeah, tune in, leave your comments. If you have any for myself or Chef Alex, we'll, we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank good you. Night. Have a good night. <laughs>